I would like to sincerely thank the Isaac Regional Council, along with the Regional Arts Development Fund, for their support in bringing you this interview. The Regional Arts Development Fund is a partnership between the Queensland Government and Isaac Regional Council to support local arts and culture in regional Queensland. For International Women's Day 2021, I wanted to bring to you my conversation with someone who, for me, epitomises exactly what being a woman is all about. Heidi Smith has had her fair share of challenges, and yet she lives her life with grace, kindness and love. Heidi is courageous but isn't afraid to show her vulnerability, which I think as women is where our real strength lies. I hope you enjoy listening to Heidi's story. Heidi, um, thank you for sitting here with me today. And I particularly wanted to have you on Life Journey for International Women's Day, because to me, you personify everything that there is about being a woman. You're strong, you're courageous, but you have um, a real softness and you have a lot of empathy and you're very kind. Thank you. And I was actually speaking to one of your friends who will remain nameless. <laughs> And she just said to me, you know what inspires me the most about this girl is the grace that she handles, stop it, <laughs> <laughs> the grace that she handles her challenges with and, and what, you know, is, yeah. So yeah. you're very loved. And Thank you're you very, very much. Strong. It's very humbling. So, yeah. Mm. But anyway. We're going well on the minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got the waterworks on. And I'll be a shock for me. a few of my friends. <laughs> Um, but Heidi, I just, I guess we'll start at the beginning, like yep. when you were a child and um, because you, you've got so much, you're so strong and determined and um, I'm interested to know where that came from. Um, is it something that, you know, came through your challenges or was that instilled in, in you when you were little? Um, we were very lucky. We had a beautiful upbringing. Um, I'm one of three, so I'm the youngest. So. Um, maybe a little bit of resilience because I did get um, beat on a little bit by my sisters when they were in the right mood. But no, we had such a privileged upbringing. Mum and Dad taught us a lot about working hard. Mm. They worked very, very hard for everything that they've got. And, um, you know, you want to talk inspirational, they are it for us, um, for all of us girls. They've set a beautiful, um, just a beautiful example of of how to, to make it happen, mm -hmm. you know, get in and get the work done and do the thing that you've got to do to, to get where you want to be. And you can aspire to be anything. So, um, no, we had a great childhood and, and definitely, um, you know, just a good bush upbringing, had our horses and lived for them. Um, it was a very, uh, you know, we were talking the other day, we were laughing about, um, you know, kids drafts and those things. And um, just that, you know, dad had a rule that if we wanted to go to the draft on the weekend, he was happy to take us, but we had to ride our horses. And someone said, oh, did you, or, or he wouldn't take us. Mm -hmm. And someone said, oh, did that ever, did, oh, he wouldn't have followed through. I said, none of us were ever game enough to test it. Um, because it was our responsibility, you know, in terms of um, that end result, which is the fun of going to the camp draft and, and having our fun with our friends and all of that, we, yeah. we had to do the work to get there. And, yeah. and dad worked, um, you know, we, had a, we have a transport business, um, so he was away a lot um, and mum would help us, you know, pack and do all of that. But the getting on the horses and going and doing it was our job. So, yes, in a lot of ways, I guess, you know, definitely that work ethic um, was instilled in us from, from a very young age. Um, and then uh, we went, I was lucky enough, we were educated and mum sort of had a rule around education. Uh, it didn't finish with school. So all of us girls were, um, it was just, you went to school and then went on to uni, mm. um, which I was very, um, you know, very, I'm very grateful for. You know, it was never, um, never an option not to. I bucked the system a little bit. I had a year off. Um, mum always uh, was pretty hard that she didn't think that we needed a year off. We needed to keep going through. I was, I think she thought not, that we wouldn't load again and, and go. But um, I did have a year off and I went <laughs> um, I went on the road. I was very lucky. I went, uh, went on the road with Dad for a good bit. I went to Elliston and worked some polo horses down there, which was fun and different. And then um, did a really big stint at the end with Terry on the road. So um, I did learn that I wanted to go and get educated because yeah. as much as I enjoyed that um, and I still look back and I was telling yarns the other day to my nieces about you know those days I it was I knew that I wanted to go and do something else so yeah. and again that was mum and dad's encouragement and the opportunities were presented to us um but we were the ones who had to go and do the do yeah. the thing at the end of the day yeah. yeah you're very lucky that you had parents that could see that because especially for women and I say this to my girls you have to get something behind you because you know you can't rely on what might 
be later on. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, I went on to learn very, um, very harshly, I suppose, um, about being able to control what you can control and having that stability of my education, which then led me to my professional um, side of my life where, yeah. I, where I, I do have a good job that I could count on. And um, that fallback option, fallback, I say in inverted commas, because it's always been front and centre for me. I've always yeah. worked. Um, um, but it was a, it's a security that no one else can give you. Yeah. It's just mine. I'm the one who, who has that degree and I'm able to then, you know, the world's my oyster in terms of my, my professional side of things. So, yeah, absolutely. And and we were girls, I guess. Mum was mindful of that as well. Um, mm. That uh, and, and not to say, you know, my sisters um, have, some have, have got two nephews as well, but they're also really mindful that the world's changing and mm. the days of, um, you know, being able to potentially, especially when we do have, hobbies like we have and we want to do things and travel and, and have adventures um, you know it, it all costs money and it all um, it all comes at, at, at an expense so being able to facilitate that myself by being employable mm. um, was pretty important yeah yeah, yeah. so Heidi um, you touched on how important um, that education was to fall back on so do you mind sharing with us what happened you yeah. know, in your life that yeah for sure things um, for you ultimately um, uh, I had a marriage breakdown. Um, um, we were raised around, I guess there's a couple of ways to look at it and it's, you know, there's one side of the story I'm able to tell that's mine and there's another side that isn't. Um, but ultimately we, you know, I, I guess the word would be to be blindsided. I had mm. a, a situation where we were ticking along, everything's good and one Friday afternoon my whole world got slipped on its head in a two minute um, conversation ultimately. So. Um, I think for me the hardest part of that was um, we all have a plan and girls, you know, it might not be as a picket fence necessarily for us, mm. we're more the caravan and, <laughs> and truck and a team of horses that you, you know, but then you're yeah. thinking about, you know, the future in terms of children and what that looks like. So I think for me it was as, as much just ticking along and then one day it just everything flips um, and not having, it wasn't anything I could do, there was nothing I could rectify. Where we're fixes my family and I couldn't fix this. Um, uh, and also having my values, you know, around honesty, integrity, some of those things that was, are so important to me and, and I guess our family, um, sort of, wow, just I just got it wrong or whatever that is. And so then it's like, holy moly, like you're on your backside here. <laughs> How do you, what do you do next? Um, and rather than look back and, and delve into that, it was just about, okay, you know, any ordinary day just turned into the biggest turnout yeah. you'd ever come across. So, um, relative to my life, don't get me wrong, yes. there's people um, who, um, if this was my lot in life, then that's okay. I have my health. I woke up with my health. I have all my family. Mm. I have my beautiful friends. And I had the capacity, um, which I I straight away knew, and I, like my family rallied, uh, you know, that, that day when... when when it all went to, to hell in a handbasket, so to speak, um, we rallied and we said, what do we do next? Nobody, yeah. everyone was well, everyone was healthy. We still had options. So I had the choice, you know, you get up or you don't. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't an option. We just got up. And then every, I think, and that's the thing. And, you know, as I went on, I got really serious about the options and, the, and the making the choice to do the thing. But um, it was just... I probably put on a mask, and I still do, Kel, like, which is now I'm crying on camera, so I guess everyone's going to work out that it might be a bit of a show. But some days you have to look to feel it before you actually feel it. Yeah. So some days, those early days particularly, and then even now sometimes, um, you might not feel happy yeah. or feel like you want to get out of bed, but pull them on and yeah. see how you go. You know? yeah. And then usually you get a bit of momentum and you get going again. Um, and again... You learn a lot about yourself, you learn a lot about your family, you learn a lot about your mates. Yeah. And I'm so, so lucky, you know, beautiful people in my life. Um, and it makes it all doable. Mm. As I say, I keep going back because I don't feel, I'm not big on, I don't want to say the victim card, but I'm not a victim. No, I'm very I've, lucky. I've never, ever, you never portray no, that, you know. No. Um, but also, if this, this isn't the worst thing in the world that could have happened. Yes, it caught me a little off guard. Um, yeah. And yes, it was a very, very large chunk of my life. I think probably, um, you know, a long time. But um, I, I, I had a choice. I, I, was, I was, I had a choice to keep going and it was, it was an easy choice to make. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And again, 
you know. So we just, um, I was, it's funny how the world works and we, we were chatting before we started about um, everything happens for a reason sort of thing, you know, the, the world might be planned out a little bit and two months earlier I'd got a phone call from one of my best mates and her and um, actually my brother-in-law worked for the same um, company and they were, um, their company had organised for them to go to Kokoda quite a bit earlier than two months ago. But anyway, she rang and one of the girls had pulled out and she said, do you want to come? And I was reasonably fit. And when I say fit, I mean, like all, um, all I was 29, maybe, maybe 29. Um, girls, we are always sort of ticking along trying to do some exercise yeah. to keep it all in shape and that. And um, and, and, and Mu had rung and she said, do you want to come? And I said, oh, yeah. And, you know, I was probably battling along, trying to scrape the money together or whatever it was at the time. And I said, yeah, you know what, that's doable. And mum said, you really should go, it'll be fun. And then, so two months on, you know, as I say, that, that day happened where um, my marriage um, sort of came to a screeching halt quite quite rapidly and promptly without any any pre-warning. And um, Kokoda, we were due to go to Kokoda seven days later. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was probably, like, looking at it now, I'm like, holy hell, how did you do that? But it was... Um, the best thing that possibly could have happened because you want to talk about making a choice every day we had to get up and and strap on our boots and and do it so the boys rang like my brother-in-law and megan rang and said do you want to still come and i said yeah absolutely i think it'd be good yeah we'll get there and i was surrounded by good people i knew a few of the girl the other crew going and and there was a really good leader who took us so within seven days we're on the hill and i think covid's reminded us of this type of thing as well but sometimes that quiet is Mm. so you know, that disconnect is actually quite good. Mm. So for me, it simplified everything and it taught me to be really tough and my feet were hurting more probably than my heart some days. So Mm. that was a nice distraction in a lot of ways, but also a lot of time to think about what's important about, you know, I know that the the road might have had a big big crook in it, but we were over there with people who were, um, you know, didn't have shoes. I got my heart broken. It's okay, you yeah. know. So I was able, to, I, and and I'm not simplifying. I'm, I'm, it, it busted me, but it, it kept giving me a nice reminder, just to keep choosing to turn up. Yeah. Mm. Do you think, um, because it, I, I imagine, quite, you know, doing Kokoda, you have to be extremely focused, putting one foot in front of the other, and, um, and, I guess it, in a way, is it a bit like that you're in a meditative state? Absolutely. Because that's all you can focus on and think of. You can't think of what's going yeah. on, you know, what you've left behind or anything. Well, because- exactly. And and we, like, um, you know, I've done some cool things since and it's still the toughest thing I ever did. And I yeah. don't know if the timing would have impacted that. Physically, it was the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. Bar none. Like, I yeah. can put some accolades in there. Like, you know, some fun things I've been lucky enough to, yeah. to get ribbons for. But it is the most rewarding thing I've ever done. But it was also the hardest thing. Um, so, absolutely. I, like, it was, it was okay. We'd, we'd, we'd make little markers. And there were uh, 12 or 14 of us in the group. And, um, you know, anyone who ever asked me, I'm like, if you ever get the offer, the chance, go and do it. But And we, we worked. I've never... We didn't know some of these. There were, you know, there was a fifty-eight-year-old fellow from from Charles, uh, from Mackay, and then someone from down at Victoria, and the guy who looks after the one of the bridges in Brisbane, and just these this random crew of people, and then three or four of us who knew each other, and and we'd find our, I guess, our weakest link, whoever was doing it toughest that day, and we'd pop them up front, and he was our leader. Yeah. Right. And okay. we would we would just rally. We would sing. It was funny how many Garth Brooks songs we all <laughs> knew the lyrics to, um, but just exactly that, like you just. And, and I think also it was, like, and don't get me wrong, I don't know if seven days later perspective is that, is that real, but um, the, the, the chat, the talk, the rumours, the reality oh. of life when I got home was so far from my mind. I just had to, you know, pick up those boots and, and then and, and just go on yeah. until, you know, and I was lucky. I, we were probably a little, we were probably towards the front of the pack in terms of fitness, like Megan and I, and... Um, it was lucky that I happened to be on the trip with one of my very best friends in the world. So yeah. she is great. But, you know, you'd be surprised if you got back to camp and there was no time for tears. We were flat having, getting our, our, um, our carb meal into us and getting into bed. Yeah. So, um, I was going to say, but you had no need for sleep. Oh, oh, <laughs> there, there, were no sleep, sleep tablets. <laughs> there were no sleep tablets needed. And, and that was the thing, you know, like, I think things happen for a reason. That trip was so random for me. Mm. Um, not that I hadn't done 
fun things like that and weird things that I guess weird not really but mm. um it just came at the right time mm. there was someone bigger than us looking after that plan mm. yeah. in in advance so it was great yeah. Dakota is amazing I yeah. and and as I said we've talked about it before you know um we'd be walking along in our $300 boots with all of the the sweat the fast sweating you know sweat mm. removal clothing mm. and someone else carrying out bags for us mind you you know mm. we had these beautiful locals who who um, carried our bags and then you'd pass um you know a grandfather and a little a little tacker and they'd be walking out in the time it took us to walk in there seven days they'd walk out and back in with supplies in you know in a day and a bit and you'd be like mm, yeah you're not doing it that tough so yeah. um yeah. i think in terms of simplifying stripping it all down and just seeing life for what it was and again healthy enough fit enough had the financial means to be there, had the ability to have time off. Like, look at all that. That's a privilege. Yeah. You know, and then to go and see it and do it. And, man, talk, talk about emotion. I had a whole nother journey in terms of what our predecessors went through. Mm. You know, you're over there and we were lucky. The guy who took us, um, the crew, um, they knew, know the track well. They do it often and they put, put your bags down, crew. We're just going to go off, off road here for a second and they'd take us up these alleyways and, and they'd be you know, helmets and remnants of, oh. of, of casings and, and things like that. And you're like, wow. Like, yeah, it was, yeah. I came home and got right into the Kokoda history because yeah. it was just fascinating. It was a wonderful, wonderful place to be. Yeah. Yeah, it was really great. Um, Heidi, you didn't stop there and that kind of gave you the momentum to keep going and do all these yeah. amazing <laughs> challenges and you actually also climbed to the base, went to the base camp at Everest. Yeah, yeah, so we did. Um, so I must have done Kokoda in 2014. Um, and then, and again, my fitness journey, so to speak, um, wasn't motivated through much other than, oh, it's a way to keep everything in check, you know, um, physically myself. Um, but then it became, um, I really love what it does for my mind. I really love the outcomes. You know, you get to the end of a, the first time I did a half marathon, I did the one at the Gold Coast, must have been that that following year. And again, I, I think what I came to focus on a lot, I guess because stuff that I couldn't control took a lot of, had a lot of impact in my life at different times, I concentrated on the things I could control. And if I was willing to train, I was able to get these amazing, like you were talking dolphins, it's amazing when you get to the end of that race, you're like, I did that myself, mm. just me, mm. you know? So yes, I did do some cool things. I did a bike ride, it was 600 and, I don't know, I think 660 cats <laughs> over six days on a mountain bike, which uh, I'm, I'm not a great bike rider. I don't, I don't love it, I get quite bored, which is hilarious because I'm gonna do another one on the weekend. But um, so that was a, a Westpac ride. We did raise some money and, and had some fun again. There's a, a beautiful group of people who um, have worked this stuff out before me in terms of, you know, what it gives you. So there's a, a – and just encouraging, you know, there's so much room, I guess, at the top – or not, the, not that I'm anywhere near it, but there's so much room in that industry um, to facilitate and support. You know, they get so excited. There's strangers cheering for us, for us on the, in this marathon at the Gold Coast, people yeah. bringing chairs out to the roadside, clapping and cheering and offering, offering us drinks. And mm. um, So, yeah, I did it and I've done – uh, Hell of the West with a couple of teams a couple of times and then yeah two or three years ago my elder sister Renee um, and a really good mate of hers that she went to uni with and then my very dear friend Sarah Cookson we did base camp yeah. and it was a hoot yeah that's a pretty wild crew they were pretty funny so we laughed a lot so how did you cope because we live in Australia where it's so hot and you go to a country like that that is just freezing temperatures and yeah um Preparation is important. And I'll say this, you know, some of the um, guys who did Kokoda um, had done some other good climbs, like Killy, my brother-in-law had done Killy, and um, a couple of the other boys had done stuff. And you can't underestimate what's in front of you. Everything's different. And Killy's said to be harder than Kokoda if you ask the right person or the wrong person. So there was, I went to Everest um, thinking probably pretty fit, but not as fit as I was for Kokoda. And in terms of how your body reacts, like you've just got to get a really good understanding of of what's in front of you and again we're lucky enough um you know you hook up with the right tour group and you get all the right clothing and um it was hard to train for because we went in november so it was proper hot over here mm. too and then got over there and by the time we got to the top it was three and four layers and you're still chattering in your in mm. your boots and smelling mm. the caro um in, when you go to bed you know mm. we weren't taking shoes off to go to bed because it was so damn cold but um mm, wow Wow. Same same deal, Kel. You know, you get pretty. You just go. Oh, well, it's a night. 
Yeah. I'll get through on a few hours of sleep and um, yeah, it was it was it was amazing. Um, but it was longer. So Kokoda took us eight days, um, but Everest was twelve. Oh wow! Yeah, so it was um, it, it required about that eight number day eight. We, we we were all not as funny as we thought we were. Mm. There was a little bit more. Um, yeah, you're tired and 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 a bit hangry probably as well. You know, yeah. like we're a bit sick of um, the monotony. But then the eighth day, you get to base camp, and again that feeling of achievement. Yeah. But then you've got to turn around and walk home, <laughs> which yeah. was a, um, we were a bit faster on the way down, but it was it was great. It was yeah. great. And things that you can share. I love like, you know, Cooker and I have been mates since we were little, um, going to drafts and doing all those things, but I love that we've got that notch on our belt as yeah. a friendship. And my sister and I got to do it as well. So, um, uh, you know, that's just – it's a, another way to have a different relationship and, and we know each other on a whole other level now, all of us. But, yeah, yeah it's really fun and – We've, we've got it. We've done it. Yeah. yeah. How dangerous is, is it walking to base camp? Because I, I guess it gets, you know, escalates as you, as yeah. you climb, actually climb to the top of the mountain. But is it, like, do you fear for your life? No. No, no so not at all. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a highway nearly up there in yeah, terms right. of foot traffic. Um, yeah. Kokoda, we might have passed um, two other groups of 12 or, or so in the whole, the whole time. Base camp, we were probably passing, uh, you know, maybe... 50 or 60 people better, mm. more. It, it's it's well-travelled. Um, the trouble, I guess, for some people and, and a couple of our crew got quite, quite crook from altitude. Uh, um, I was very lucky yeah. I didn't. Um, I think I was starting to and then I was like, no, it's just a bit of a headache and that's probably because I didn't drink enough water. Like a bit of... No, I, there's I'm, a lot of trickery yeah, goes on here. That's um, amazing. But uh, that's all. And that's only really you can then make it... We passed a few good people getting sort of hauled downhill quite quickly because... As long as they can get you down, that feeling leaves you apparently. Yeah. So, um, but no, it's safe as houses. Yeah. It's safe as houses. Yeah. Rit more. As far as, you know, those type of houses go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Heidi, what I really love about you, watching you, is it doesn't matter where you are. So, right now we're at the classic, and I'm talking to you yesterday, and you're busy with the horses and everything, but then you say to me, Oh, I'm going to Gundy on. Sunday mm. to um, go in a triathlon <laughs> and I'm thinking you know how do you fit that in and most normal people would think oh no now I can only do one thing I either get to go to Tamworth or I go to Gundy but not you you just and I've seen you at Warwick you know when we're in the midst of everything and how busy it gets down there and you're in the middle of the day right I've got a couple of hours spare I'm going running yeah you know you don't let obstacles get in your way or you don't seem to you just find a way around them and yeah um well I do have some slack days but so yes I on Sunday I don't have a choice but to be diligent this week um I did have to tie, tidy up the athlete diet and, <laughs> and liquid consumption a little bit in the next two days but um I guess dad has always you know said if you sort of not sweating or you know you're not in debt or whatever it is you're not having a go so for me if I'm not chewing pretty hard on on multiple things um we don't sit idle very well mm. our family and that's it's a lovely trait except when you're at the Gold Coast and you're like oh I wonder how long do we go home which <laughs> we're terrible for um don't get me wrong I love a layabout as, as as much as anyone but the novelty wears off probably pretty quick mm. um but it's not all, I don't get the credit for all of the actual, I get it for the doing, but in terms of the inspiration, so to speak, you know, there's a lot of girls and I, International Women, Women's Day works well for me to say girls, but I, they are, there are women and, and girls younger than me who I look up to and I'm like, their work ethic and their diligence and as a result, their outcomes. Like, that's my thing and I've, I've probably worked out a little bit more as I've gotten older. Um, it's okay if you don't want to do the work whatever that is you know if if it is only you know trot your horses up on a thursday to use it use drafting as an example but if you don't get the results you've got to be okay with the results being relative to the input mm. likewise with the training like i probably haven't done as much I, i'm okay i've done i've done some i've got an 80k bike ride on sunday in a triathlon with a team um of girls um i've done an i've done enough work i'm not going to do a pb though mm. um but i need to be okay with that because i i chose to you know, that I missed a couple of sessions and a few things along the way. So it's a, um, you know, and I often, 
you'll get up some days and I don't every day get out of bed and go, oh, well, I want to run. Just like some people don't get up every day and it, it, we don't all get up and go, oh, let's go ride that two-year-old that went mm. so great yesterday. Mm. But it's about going, well, hang on a sec. That's okay. Don't do that run. Mm. But be happy enough when that that personal best isn't reached or, or you don't do that run as easy yeah. at that race or all that two-year-old, you know, comes to the sale and he's not as good or, mm. or your camp horse only got trotted up on a Thursday and you didn't bother going down to the flag or go chase some, get, mm. get some bother getting cows in. It's okay as long as you're okay with the outcome because I, I've, you know, you can see and it, 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 some days you don't get that reward. Some days you go there and, and the cows aren't there or or you, you've got a bad start in the race and you might I'm not winning any races, to be clear. I'm looking down the barrel for that. But, you know, I always set myself goals. Mm. They're very, um, they're smart goals. They're, they're, they're achievable um, with effort. Yeah. So um, I just think getting my head around that has been really good um, across the board with life. Mm. You know, it's, it's about going, okay, you know, the people getting the outcomes, albeit not every weekend, not every event, not every um, work meeting, you know, or every pay rise, but... Um, Eventually, if you knock enough and if you do the work enough and you keep grinding, they'll come. Mm. The op- you know, they say that luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Keep prepared because mm. you don't know if this weekend's the opportunity or, or next weekend or for maybe it's three years down the track. And likewise with the other parts of my life that may not be quite back on where I thought they'd be, keep turning up. Mm. Keep being good. Keep being um, authentic and true to yourself and it'll turn up. Mm. So. Why do I always get teary? Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. That was just, and you know, I know just, there's just so much power, I think, in hearing other people's stories and them telling them honestly and breaking down the barriers and Mm. and helping people to feel that they're not the only ones. So, you know, people that are going through a really tough time, hearing your story and it's it's okay to still get sad sometimes yeah. but like you say turn up and yeah. you know you'll get yeah. through it you yeah know. absolutely and i mean we don't um maybe it's australians maybe it's australian women maybe it's regional women i don't know but sometimes we we might you know there's a lot of masks that are pulled up um and that's why having a really great support network whether it's running a marathon getting through a hard time chasing a promotion or your, your goal is to win the, the gold cup. Um, having the right people around you who are encouraging and supporting and all the things I just listed, there's room enough at the top for everyone. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, I've had a lot of um, joy through the horses and, and through different things, and but it's about, um, and I've had a lot of times where you're like, that didn't quite go how we planned and, and it doesn't, that's life. But again, I keep, I keep going back to it because there's people worse off there's people who are fighting bigger battles. There, are, um, we still I have the opportunity and the option. I, th- I'm, I, I think that um, keeping on making um, the choice um, actively, and you know the power of the word just. Some days you wake up and you know you're like, oh, I've got to do a 10k run today because I have a beautiful trainer who's who's awesome. And that's again my biggest tip. You know, people go, oh, how did you get into it? Um, well, first I put my joggers on and, and literally trotted to well, dro- ran to the first jogged to a guidepost and walked and jogged and, and that. But then get the people around you who can support you. There's experts in whatever field it is that you want to be, you know, try and do something in. Mm. But some days you wake up and you're like, I don't want to do that 10K run that Sarah's mapped out. But I, I cut myself a deal and I'll just put my joggers on and I'll do, I'll go for a walk for 2K. Nine times out of 10K, you turn that walk, you get out there and you're like, oh, it's beautiful out here this morning. Oh, my legs feel pretty good actually. Oh God, I'll just run down here just and then you do that before you know it nine times out of ten and if it's not if it is that one time out of ten where you're like that was still horrible i've done that but but you still weren't in bed you got up and you did the 2k Mm. run if it's the two-year-old horse you know maybe you you aren't going to bother you know taking the 10 the 30 minutes to go get cows up you might just go and flag him and then you get there and you're like actually he feels really good i want to go get cows up or you just flag him and he's one right in front of where he was so Mm. for me it's it is a little bit of trickery you Mm. know you've got to um, some days aren't. Some days are diamonds, and some days are damn stone. Mm. And I have stony days that I smile and nod through, and then you go home and you're like, oh. But yeah. turn up, yeah. You know, and then eventually it all it all pieces together, and it's wonderful. Yeah. It's so fortunate. Yeah. Had fun time, all the way. Heidi, thank mm. you. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank, thank you very you much. I feel privileged to be story. here. Oh, I'm privileged to have you. Thank you. Thanks, girl. Thanks so much for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please try to remember to just click on the subscribe button so we can keep you updated with everything that's happening. Thank you.